In order to counter stealthy aircraft, a multi-layered approach would probably be best. The first layer would be acoustic. You're just tracking the noise signature of the aircraft. Aircraft are relatively loud and have distinctive noise signatures. If you've ever heard a B-2 bomber, it has a very distinctive noise signature. It's kind of a whine from the front and a rumble from the back. The problem with acoustic tracking is that the bombers are traveling at Mach 0.85. By the time the sound arrives, the indicated position of the sound is significantly in back of the bomber's actual position. And the bomber in that time could have spread out over a wide area. But at least you know that there's a stealth aircraft operating. And that is the first part of defending against a stealth aircraft. The next layer is to take away high altitude flying. At high altitudes, the air is relatively clear. There isn't a lot of moisture, there isn't a lot of dust, and visual light travels fairly well. If you use something like a blended wing body aircraft, potentially you could get up to altitudes close to 60,000 feet. You don't want to go over 60,000 feet because above 60,000 feet, a human body exposed to that altitude will have its blood boiling and you will die a painful death. You have to wear a pressurized suit in case there's damage to the aircraft. But if you get up to 55,000 feet, you're looking through clear air. In daylight, you have a dark object against the light sky. In theory, cameras can see it. It's a small object, but with a large camera array, it should be possible to identify an aircraft at a significant distance. At night, you can use forward-looking infrared, and you can have an array of them. In theory, the distance that you can detect is based upon the square root of the number of FLIR, forward-looking infrared devices. If you have 400 of them, you can get 20 times the distance of one of them. If one of them can see a stealth aircraft at 10 miles, an array of 400 should be able to see it at 200 miles. Once a target has been detected, it is possible to use an array of lasers, the same way a phased array radar system works. By timing them, you can steer the laser wavefronts to form a directed front towards a given target, towards a given area of space. You don't want the lasers to be too concentrated. You want them to have a little bit of spread. With the lasers, you can measure the time to reflection with a pulse of laser light. That'll give you a distance. And in theory, you can also measure the Doppler shift to get a speed. Atmospheric moisture diffracts light. And so you have things like fog and cloud, which obscure light and obscure lasers and visual imaging. What you're trying to do is force the stealth aircraft to fly at lower altitudes and in cloud cover. That reduces their range and makes them more vulnerable to detection by ground-based systems. If you have a day with clear skies, it should be possible to identify a stealth aircraft at a long distance. Of course, one of the factors in all of this is the size of the aircraft. The bigger the stealth aircraft, the more likely it is to be detected at a longer distance. A smaller aircraft is less detectable, but it also carries less bombs and will tend to have a shorter range. The next option is to build large numbers of autonomous driving radar vehicles. And it's basically a truck with a phased array radar. In this example, this is about an eight by 16 foot phased array radar unit. And the vehicle is about the size of a city bus in the United States. City bus in the United States is about 32 to 35 feet long. This vehicle would probably be a little bit smaller than that. Normally it would have no personnel on board, but you might want to have a driver's cab in the front just if there's an occasion when you want to have a driver for whatever reason. The cab has to, of course, be vandal proof, thick glass, secure doors. And what it does is just drives down the road, highways or county roads, parks on the side of the road, rotates the radar, and starts observing with its radar. On board the vehicle, there has to be a large amount of processing capacity. What you're going to send from that vehicle is the reduced targeting. So you have to have some means of transmitting either up to a satellite or something more like a cell phone tower, it will transmit the information to it and that'll be collected at a central office. It is gonna do the first level though of screening out targets. And so only good quality target information is being transmitted. It might only do this for a few minutes. Then it would put down the radar, drive down the road and reposition itself. A large number of vehicles moving around in a somewhat random pattern makes it very hard to know where the radar is and how to avoid it. When operating a B-2 bomber, mission planning is very elaborate. They're not invisible, they have reduced radar, and depending on the aspect with which they're seen, they have a greater or lesser radar profile. In general, you want them to be seen edge-on from the side, which has the minimum radar profile. If a B-2 bomber is flying along and it detects a radar ahead of it, it avoids it. It'll make a turn and a detour around it to reduce the risk of detection. If there is a large number of radar units turning on, turning off, and repositioning themselves, the bomber pilot can't really do that. There is a very high probability he's gonna overfly one of those radar units and be detected. Now, one of the problems with this, of course, is cost. The continental United States is about 3 million square miles. 
If you had 20,000 vehicles, that's one vehicle for every 150 square miles or about 12 by 12 miles. If you're willing to pay $20 billion a year for them, the U.S. defense budget is almost $900 billion. If you build in 20,000 vehicles, if they last 10 years, that's 2,000 vehicles a year. At $20 billion, you have $10 million per unit with a production rate of 2,000 per year. And the question is just how effective would that radar be? At what distance can it effectively detect a stealth aircraft? It should be enough. You should be able to get a pretty good radar for that. For the blended wing body aircraft with the forward looking infrared arrays, the cost for one aircraft would be at least $50,000 per hour. There's 8,700 hours in a year. So the cost of one orbit would be $500 million. At least for $20 billion, you can get 40 orbits. Again, the United States is about 3 million square miles. It's about 80,000 square miles. That's about 280 miles by 280 miles. That might be enough to force stealth aircraft to fly at a lower altitude. Another possibility is to scan with radar at different frequencies. So you have maybe four phased array units. Each of them might be eight or 10 feet square. Each one of them is at a different frequency. If you're looking for different frequency responses in the stealth aircraft and the stealth coatings. Radio waves can be transmitted from tens of thousands of cycles per second to over a billion cycles per second. That's a range of about 100,000. If you pick four spaced out frequencies, there is a good chance that any stealth aircraft will have a different response to at least one of them. You're looking for the individual responses from each radar unit, but you're also comparing. You're comparing each of them in pairs or more than pairs, and you're looking for an anomaly. Does one of them get a different return? That different return could indicate the presence of an aircraft. This requires an enormous amount of processing capacity. If you're pulsing at four different frequencies, each unit is pulsing only one fourth of the amount of times per second. You should still have pretty good coverage. This would not be a particularly mobile system. It's intended more for fixed locations and things like larger warships. For something like a blended wing body aircraft, it might be possible to put four of them in a row in a pod outside the aircraft. If you only had one frequency, you could obviously have a larger screen and it would have better accuracy at that frequency. But you're looking for differences in frequencies to try to exploit stealth. The primary goal is to delimit the area where the stealth aircraft is located to make it available to be found. Even with an acoustic system, the most recent information may be one minute old. A stealth aircraft could fly nine miles in that time. But if you have a track of the aircraft over several minutes, from five minutes ago to one minute ago, predictions can be made on the current location of the aircraft. Acoustic systems are reliant upon the speed of sound. The speed of sound varies with altitude and with weather conditions. So there's an inaccuracy, but you can put a lot of acoustic systems on rooftops along roads, and you can get an approximate location for the aircraft, and you can predict the approximate location, particularly if it is forced to fly at lower altitudes. If you can define it to within a box that's 10 by 10 miles square, a manned or an unmanned aircraft with sensor systems, radar, forward-looking infrared, should be able to find it and destroy the stealth aircraft. Another vulnerability of stealth aircraft are contrails. When fuel is burned in an engine, it produces carbon dioxide and water vapor. Under cold enough conditions, the water vapor freezes into ice crystals. Ice crystal plumes can be seen from the ground as contrails. They look like clouds when they're illuminated by sunlight. At night, there is the possibility of scanning the sky with laser pulses, the same way that a phased array radar scans the sky. Those pulses of laser light can illuminate the contrail. At the front end of the contrail, there is an airplane. This would force stealth aircraft to fly at altitudes where contrails do not form. That is typically well under 30,000 feet. The other option is if there's clouds, they can fly through the clouds and the contrails will blend in with the clouds. The ground-based systems operate where there is ground. Over the ocean, stealth aircraft do have some more freedom of movement under the right weather conditions. 